Let us pray. Father Lord, thank you for the gift of a new day. Thank you also Lord for the grace, privilege, and opportunity to share your word with your people and to pray with them. Lord, as your word says in Psalms 119 verse 130. The entrance of your words gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. Lord, let your word that is about to come forth enter and give light of wisdom and understanding, and by so doing, turn every listener into a financial giant and the perfect definition of God's blessedness, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, guide our mouths and tongues to speak only what you have quickened in our spirit by your Holy Spirit. Allow lives to be changed, transformed, and blessed with abundance. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for answering, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Financial blessings, among other things, are one of God's covenanted areas with His people. We can see this in the various scriptures from Job chapter 36, verse 11 where the scripture says, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity, and their years in pleasures. And again in Job chapter 22, from verses 23 to 25, it says, If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up, you will remove iniquity far from your tents. Then you will lay your gold in the dust, and the gold of Ophir among the stones of the brooks. Yes, the Almighty will be your gold and your precious silver. Also in Exodus chapter 23, verses 25 to 27, the Bible says, So you shall serve the Lord your God, and He will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land, I will fulfill the number of your days. I will send my fear before you, I will cause confusion among all the people to whom you come, and will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. In Deuteronomy 28, from verses 2 through 13. This seems to be the mother of all of God's prescriptions and declarations that it is His will to have His people blessed and live in abundance. The Bible says here, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face, they shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods, in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail, you shall be above only, and not be beneath, if you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them. And again still, the Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 to 12, talking about the covenant that gives believers access to abundance. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, 
If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. From all of the foregoing, one cannot help but see clearly and establish that the will of God for us is prosperity. He says in 3 John, chapter 1 verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. Which means that prosperity and good health are priorities in the mind of God concerning his children. Because, as we can see from the scripture, it says, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health. However, I will make the bold statement that, as it has always been the character of God, God most of the time requires our obedience and our will for him to make good on his wishes for us. That is why the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So God's prosperity plan for us is more of a covenant than a promise. As a covenant, it hinges on, if we can do our part, for God's part, he is always committed to doing his part, which is to ensure that we enjoy the blessings of good health and abundance of the good things we desire in life. Specifically financial blessings. Because it costs money to live a good life, a comfortable life, to care for our health, and to do many other things that make life enjoyable and worthwhile. But the good news is that God is committed to providing us all the money we need for all that we may need to be comfortable if we can follow his guidelines, just as we have seen in the foregoing scriptures. And it is our understanding of the scriptures, that financial prosperity and abundance are our heritages in Christ, which gives us access to possessing them. Because knowledge is the deliverer, as we can see in Obadiah chapter 1, verse 17. But on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Mount Zion is the house of God, where we go to gain knowledge, be reprimanded, and gain understanding about God and His Word. And when those are done, we are positioned to receive our heritages from God, that is, to possess our possessions. In John chapter 8 verse 32, the Bible says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I pray for you, as you have been equipped with this knowledge and understanding, to receive the grace to be rich, in the name of Jesus Christ. And because Christ became poor, you might be rich according to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, which says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. As a result, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bestow upon you the ability to create wealth. I shift you to the next level of good health, abundance, and prosperity in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, King of Glory, thank you once more for your grace and loving kindness towards us. Dear Heavenly Father, it is abundantly evident as we see in the scriptures that you take pleasure in the welfare and prosperity of your children. Therefore, dear Lord, I pray and ask of you to provide to us all that we would ever need to attain this plan and your wishes for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, just destroy with destruction every power or force that is working to frustrate your wishes and plans for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, let their evil and diabolical plans against us, your children, perish with them. Thank you, dear Father Lord, for answering, for in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.